my daughter was gone. She could not handle it. She could not survive it. She had wounds everywhere because of the beating I used to endure. He would always wait when I leave my house and he would beat me as saying that I killed my baby. At some point, it is unbelievable. The pain that she has been through is indescribable, uncontainable, and we just couldn't find the right words to explain it. She was tortured and almost killed by her own husband. She was in coma due to the beatings that she had gone through. She always used to ask her mother for help, but she did not know what her mother was doing behind her back. This is Martha's story. Today, we are in Kenya a country in the east of Africa where we went to find Martha so that she could share her story to the rest of the world because what she has been through is almost unbelievable. The way that she has been surviving is a miracle. My dad died in the year 1995. Martha was born and she grew up in a family just like other children. When she turned 10 years of age, this is when she was told that she was not living with her biological parents. At the age of 10, that is when I knew the person I was living with was not my mom, but my auntie. My mom came and took me to a boarding school where she left me again and went back outside the country. In the boarding school where she was left, life became so terrible and no one cared about her. While other children were being visited, no one ever came to see her. When it was time for going home, she was left at school since no one was bothered. She knew that her mother was not in the country. She sent a message to her mother's siblings telling them that she was still at school all alone and she was hungry. What came as a reply was a letter and this is what was written. Tender age of 10, I could not understand what it was written because it was in vernacular. But today I remember it very clearly and I came to understand what was written. And this is what was written. Your mother does not care about you anymore. So why should we care about you? You shall live in poverty, die in poverty, and you will dig a grave and bury yourself. I took the letter to the headmistress. But because I was very tender, she could not explain to me. She only hugged me and told me, from today, you shall be my daughter. She was and taken in by the school principal, who she refers to as the headmistress. She was well taken care of until one day when her auntie decided to come and pick her from school. I was in the kitchen cooking for you. She went home, but life was not at all good until her grandmother noticed what was going on and she decided to take on. Martha lived with her grandmother until her mother came back. When her mother came back to Kenya, she said that she was now going to take care of her daughter and she had come back for good. Martha was very happy, but she did not know that things were going to even get worse. Her mother got married and Martha was always sent to the villages where this man came from. She always used to come back home when it was time for going back to school and her life was miserable. I would only come back home if tomorrow the schools open. And that was my journey. Pain. Missing love, mother's love. Missing someone to hold me and tell me I love you. She says that her mother's marriage did not last long because all that her husband wanted was the money that Martha's mother had come with from abroad. When it got done, they separated and they moved different ways. Now they lived on their own, Martha and her mother. She dropped out of school because they couldn't manage to afford it anymore. She looked for all sorts of jobs so that she could work and take care of her mother. According to her, she always used to work night and day. During this time, she says that she met the love of her life. It was the first time that someone had ever been so good and cared about her like this. 
Later, she ended up falling in love with this man. And, you know, I would listen, he would call. Did you get to work well? Are you working? So that feeling kept me knowing I was loved. I was walking up my hills knowing that I have someone who loved me. And it didn't last for long before I moved in with him. And so I, I became... When she moved in with him, life became a nightmare because she was always beaten each and every day for no good reason. And so it happened that immediately I moved in, he stopped working, so I was the breadwinner. And every time I would be paid money, I would be beaten for me to produce all the money. He'll go and drink. He'll come back with a woman in the house. He would sleep with that woman on our bed and I would be forced to watch. As days went by, it kept on becoming worse. One day, she went with her husband's siblings to visit her mother-in-law. When the old lady saw her, she asked who Martha was. After knowing that she was a wife to her son, she felt so sorry for Martha and this made her even more confused. Why would your mom-in-law ask me such? I thought every woman is happy when they see their kids married. And she asked me, you know, I could not tell her. But you know the first woman to be brought there. And this man has really wasted so many young girls by beating them and destroying their life. Martha called her mother asking for help. She said that her husband was beating her up mercilessly, but her mother did not want to hear it. Because of always going to work with a black eye, with a broken arm, it came to a point I was fired. Since Martha always used to go to work with open wounds after the beatings that she had been through in the night, she was fired. Martha was now seriously scared and she wanted to leave, but now she had nowhere to go. When she came back home as usual, her husband started beating her up. This time, it was worse. This place, this person used to beat me naked and switching off the lights. He would always see me, but me, I would, always, I would not see him. So he would never ever miss anything even when he was beating me he was never missing and so this night he beat me i remember he beat me from around it was around 9 p.m in the evening he beat me until 4 a.m in the morning non-stop she was beaten and beaten and at some point he felt like it was not enough he picked up an iron box plugged it in so that it gets really hot and then and burnt me with it on my back. And that is when I collapsed. He took off. And the next morning, I found myself in the hospital bed. At the hospital, the doctors saw the wounds that Martha had. So when I woke up, the doctor asked me, Martha, why do you want to kill yourself and your baby? I asked him, what baby are you talking about? He told me. She was shocked because she did not know that she was pregnant. After then, she decided to never go back to that man's house again. She was scared that this time she might lose her life. She went and rented the house, but it was so small and so bad. And every time it would rain, it would be like you slept outside. It was not like a home, it was like a shell. I survived there with my pregnancy. She struggled to survive, thinking that her husband was now out of her life, but this was not the case at all. After a busy day of Martha trying to get food, he always used to wait for her in the dark streets at night when she was going home and still beat her up for no reason. And I would go again to my house with wounds. And I survived until it came to a point of going for delivery. Time for giving birth came. According to the torture and the mistreatment that she had been through, the baby was badly affected. She gave birth to a baby girl who lasted for only minutes and she died. It was not easy. And I remember after losing my daughter, 
My mom came to pick me. Her husband still followed up Martha. He continued beating her up, accusing her of killing their baby. Life was now tough. She decided to go somewhere far and run to God. This is when she headed to church and started praying. One day, one of the pastors asked for her phone number so that they could pray together. They later became friends. He promised Martha to help her find a job because she needed it. It was not long after then when he called Martha on the phone and he said that he had finally found a job for her and she should come sign a contract and start working. Well, this was not true at all. At the back of his mind, he knew that there was no job. When she arrived at his place, he closed the door and the worst happened. He overpowered me. He laid me on his bed. He torn my clothes and he raped me. I asked him, why did you do this? He pushed me out of his house. A few weeks later, she felt sick. She went to the hospital only to be told that she was pregnant. She carried the results and took them to the pastor that had raped her and made her pregnant. Here's the letter from the doctor. After whatever you did for me, this is the results. You were pregnant. I time. was pregnant with the baby. Mm. Out of rape. He looked at me. And he told me, you need to get rid of that bastard. I am building my career. She decided to go and pray somewhere else because she never wanted to step in that church again. Unfortunately, it was also another bad experience to her and she wondered if these people were real pastors or they were just pretending to be. Then when I went to this church, thinking I would be accepted, I was told at one particular Sunday that the Holy Spirit has said that I am a prostitute, I should leave the church because I am pregnant and I am not married. That made me hate churches. I hated everything about God because I asked, where is this God that allowed me to be defiled? I'm still looking for him and wherever I'm gone, I'm being told the Holy Spirit has spoken. Where was this Holy Spirit when I wanted him to defend me from this man? Taking advantage of me. She gave birth, though it was a struggle. Today, her son is 12 years old. She put the history behind and she decided to work for her baby. But God made a way for my son. Today he's 12 years. And every time I look at him, I thank God for him. She gave her mother some money to start working on her own. Martha also went to start a new life with her baby. Ten years later, in 2020, her mother called in the middle of the night saying that there was a man that wants to kill her. When she said the name of the man, it was Martha's ex who always used to beat her up. If I recall vividly well, this is a man we've separated over 10 years. I've not met him, I've not seen him. Yet my mom is telling me that he wants to kill him. What relationship is going on? She called her auntie and they headed to where Martha's mother was living. When they got there, they were shocked. They found Martha's ex-husband sitting in the house comfortably. With a lot of anger, they asked the kind of connection that the both of them had and this is when he said, we have been living as husband and wife over 15 years. 15 years. Well, they had been together for 15 years. This means that when he was dating Martha, he was also dating her mother at the same time. So my aunt asked, we've been looking for you of what you did to her. And he said, she hit me. Your mother? Yeah. Mm. I couldn't stand it. I looked at them and walked away. I felt betrayed. Both of them knew it and this really hurt Martha. 
she walked away and went back home. It was not long after then when her mother fell sick. This man abandoned her in the house and Martha brought her in. According to Martha, she spent all the savings that she had to treat her mother. The entire process and the surgeries were very expensive and she had to get loans too. Her mother got well and she went back to her house leaving Martha in a lot of debts. Now this is my mother. And, uh, beside her this is my son. Her son failed to go to school. They even got to a point where they failed to get food. And this is when, for the very first time, my son asked me, Mom, I'm not in school. We can barely feed. Where is my father? Why can't he come and help us? She asked him for help, but he refused to give them a hand or even do anything about it. He rejected us again. He even blocked us in every media platform, in every phone number. He knew he will, we will get him. He blocked us. Later, she wanted to go and visit her mother and see how she was doing. Before they got in, her son said that he wanted a coin to go and buy candy at the shop. She gave it to him and she got into the house first. Because I gave him, I had a coin, I gave him a coin to go get a suite and I, I got in first. But to my surprise, my mom again with my ex, cuddling, eating together. And because I didn't want my son to see, I had to come out. By the time my son was coming, I blocked him and told him, there's no one at home, let's go back to our house. When she saw this, she remembered why her neighbors always used to tell her that her brother used to come home when she had gone to work, yet Martha had no sibling. So this so-called brother, my mom used to call him my son, so everybody knew he was my brother, yet this was my ex. Every time I would step out to go to work, he would come and spend the whole day home and leave when I'm coming from work. So I never knew. So all this st started coming back to my mind when I found them the second time. From then, she finally decided to leave her mother and her ex-husband alone because she had cried enough. She let them live their own life and she decided to go and live her own and here she is today. But even seeing Afrimax visiting me, I know I'll have people to cry with me and people to support me in my journey. Yes, today, I speak to people, yes. Well, Martha has suffered a lot. She needs support so as to pay off all her debts and live a better life. The funds that will be used to support Martha will be donated via Giving Life. A link that is in the description of this video and pinned in the topmost comment by Afrimax English. Thank you for watching. My name is Prince.